The debate over racial profiling by law enforcement has been going on for years, but recent events and new technologies have made the spotlight more intense. That's one reason why an almost routine encounter with police in Mattapan Square recently made our guests very concerned. They're both members of the Milton Dialogues Committee. We'd like to welcome Don Duncan and a committee member who's also the lead organizer for Milton Reflecting. Ron Bell, uh, thank you both very much for being with us. Thank you for having us. Uh, I, I want to start with Ron because uh, you know you and Don are old friends. Uh, so give me the picture here. You're you're, you're in Mattapan Square one night, and you know, how did this all happen? Yeah, first of all, Don and I worked together on the uh, United Independent Party, and that's how I met her. And we've been working on a number of projects, and we this recent project is with the Milton Dialogues, which is a group that was formed by a gentleman that was a part of my organizing class, and Bob Wolf. And w w our p purpose is to promote diversity, to build race relations between black and white people, as well as between black and blue. So we're in our planning and organizing meeting for the dialogues that are planning on happening on, in um, October 17th. Uh, and uh, I believe it's October 17th. But anyway, it's gonna be coming up. We have four dates that, that we have scheduled. and. We were leaving the dialogue. Don was giving me a ride home, and I said, you know, I need to pick up something from the supermarket in Mattapan Square. And when I was going in, I seen a woman who is a, the mother of one of my son's friends. And, and I said, excuse me, uh, would you like to be a part of this dialogue? Here I am, community organizing, doing the right thing. And then two, pol two white police officers pulled up and walked up to me and said, what are you guys doing? And we got a report that people are arguing out here and this, that, whatever. And I'm like, excuse me? What are you talking about? And, 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 and you know, we were like alarmed because here we are conversing, laughing, joking. Actually, I gave her a hug. It was good to see her. And we get racially profiled. Now, the irony, Chris, is the fact that here I'm coming from a, 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 a race dialogue to promote race, uh, to promote uh, diversity and promote unity between communities. And then this happens. Now, so happens another cop pulls up, blocks Don in, and, and he's like, hey, Ron Bell, how you doing? And so it was like, wow, how you doing? And, and, and I know this officer because we played basketball together over the years, and he, and he also participated in Dunk the Vote. And so I went back into the car and I told Don what happened. She's like, wow, what do you mean? This, you know, and so, but, but the bottom line, it was just wrong. And, and I hope that, that he had his body camera on because ironically, that was two days after um, the launching of the pilot program for the body, body cameras. Don, what about your impressions of this? Well, I was, I was rather stunned by the whole thing. And at first I was sitting in the car. I didn't have any reason to need to go in the store. So I was sitting in the car waiting and, uh, I saw that Ron had seen his friend to invite to Milton Dialogues, and I thought, this is really cool because here's Ron Bell, community organizer, nine at night, doing what he does, community organizing this great project. And I'm sitting there, and I see these two police officers walk up, and I see them talk to Ron, but honestly, I didn't think anything of it. Being a person who I've never been racially profiled, I figured they were police officers he knew or something because he seems to always know people everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I didn't think that much of it. And then a few minutes later, when he and his friend walked up to the car and were clearly shaken, told me what happened, I went, oh, my goodness, I couldn't... Um, I, I couldn't quite take it in. It took me a little while. And then I thought, it, it, it felt very unprofessional in some odd way that someone would just walk up to two people who were just smiling, laughing, having a conversation and kind of interject themselves into their conversation and say something when there was no reason any logical person would think that they were arguing. So it, it, it kind of stunned me, I admit it. Uh, Ron, how did this play in your mind? Well. To be quite frank, I've been racially profiled all my life, you know, ever since Mission Hill days as a Cub Scout, nine years old, going to Cub Scouts, being spit on by white guys, and, um, and to the point where I was racially profiled in Brookline a number of times as a kid, because Mission Park is right near Brookline. So it, it got to a point, and, and, and also recently, um, and actually not recently, a few years ago, I was racially profiled on Boston Street by a Revere police officer, where he said that, um, I need to get out of this establishment before he kill me and put me in a body bag and make me a movie star because he wanted Deval Patrick to give him his flag is back. So, I mean, for, for this incident, it was not as bad as the, the, the norm. Um, you know, and I talked to young people about this, my son and his friends. I, I said, do y'all 
get problems with some of the police officers out here. They said they always harass us. And, you know, and that's not normal, Chris. And so when I looked at this incident, I wasn't even going to do anything because it, even me, and I shouldn't even feel this way, that it's the norm and it's, it's normal behavior. But even me, um, I, I, sh I, should, I should speak up about it because my group, the Milton Dialogues and the Milton Reflecting Project that we're working on, they were like, what do you want to do? And, and, and I said, you know what? This is not even about me. Because had this been some other African-American male, um, it, it, it could have been different. Had I not known the other black police officer, this situation could have got, gotten really ugly, Chris. And, the, this, and, and, and I say to myself, I'm glad I'm here. Because if, if that black police officer didn't come at the time he came that knew me, um, I would, might have been one of the uh, bodies that had killed, like average black men being killed on, on video now. We're talking with Ron Bell and Don Duncan from the Milton Dialogues Committee. Uh, Don, what about your sense of uh, what's normal? I, I know you're from outside of Boston, but um, you know, did this strike you as, as unusual or not? Well, it's interesting. It struck me as unusual based on my own experiences, but it didn't strike me as unusual based on things that I've seen and heard, and I've heard Ron talk about his experiences and other uh, black people that I have known myself. So that part, I, I guess I didn't find it that surprising, sadly, but I found it a really different experience actually observing it myself. And it really, it, it caused me kind of some distress for a few days, which, and I don't mean that to sound weird, but I thought if it caused me distress observing it, imagine the people experiencing how it must have affected them. So. Uh, Ron, one of the other things that would be interesting to, to get into more detail here is that, you know, these are officers who are ostensibly investigating and getting a complaint. And, right. and so they come up to you. Now, they could maybe be subtle about it and polite and, you know, and try to see if you might know anything. On the other hand, was it different from that? Well, I, I, again, it wasn't as bad as the other incidents. But it's not about me, Chris. It's about the work that I do and the people that this could have happened to, and it may continue to happen. I know another incident that uh, a, a, another black man who lives in Milton, he just told me this today, Mark Conrad, who was a former chair of the parole board. He's also a former Milton police officer. He said he was at the Dominican um, Festival. His car was blocked. in downtown Boston. Downtown Boston, Boston Street. Ironically, the same place where I got threatened by a Revere police officer. And he said that he went up to the police officer and said, uh, excuse me, um, I need to move my car. And, and the police officer, get out, of his, get out of my face and blah, blah, blah. And he started yelling and screaming at him. He said, by the way, I, you know, I just want to let you know I'm a retired police officer from Milton. He said, I don't care who you are. So if this happens to so-called, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, people who are professionals and, 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 and established black males, just imagine what happens to these young black males that, that may not have the credentials. Again, had I not known Willie Lyons or the, the police officer, um, the, the black police officer, this could have been different, Chris. It could have been different. So, you know, I, it, I mean, I tell these young people, my son and other young black males from Mission Hill to Milton to Mattapan or where have you, I say to them, take their badge, be respectful. You know, you know, do not reach for anything. Be, you know, you, you don't want to get to a point where, you know, something happens. But even if you look at what's been going on, people are raising their hands, surrendering, and they're getting shot and killed. So what do you do? We're in a bad situation right now, and I hope that with the ruling of Geraldine, Judge Geraldine Hines, when, this, when, when she ruled that uh, people are not normally guilty when they run from the police, or this whole new ruling, that, uh, uh, that uh, they don't have to be accepted that way. Uh, uh, Don, what about uh, the, the, the sense of how police demeanor comes across to people? Because, you know, I, you know, I grew up, sometimes cops are courteous and very professional. Mm -hmm. Other times, well, they're, they're kind of gruff. Uh, uh, talk about how much difference it can make if you're, if you're gruff, because sometimes, you know, that could be an obstacle to doing the, the job. I, I would think so. I mean, I think that if a, if a cop comes across in a gruff manner, it could definitely put someone on much more of a defensive and could definitely make someone react in a different way and make them actually afraid to, um, to well, it might make them run away. As Ron was saying with the ruling by the judge where they've said they're actually acknowledging that racial profiling could make people run away or get scared when they haven't actually done something wrong, that actually makes total sense to me. 
Um, I mean, in my own experience, I've had a few situations where I've gotten stopped by the police for speeding or something. And they might, and if they were gruff with me, it did make me feel like I went into this tense state and it made me feel uncomfortable and afraid. So, you know, I think that that's a normal human reaction that people, that people have if somebody interacts with you that way. And I also want to say this. I mean, I know all police officers are not bad. I, you know, and I, I've said this for, for the last 20 years. They're not all bad. And you have some bad apples on both sides, whether the police or civilians. We get that. But one thing that when you are a victim of racism, we call it trauma triggers, right? When you're a victim, when that incident happened, it brings you back to when I was nine years old in Mission Hill. It brings you back when I was threatened by the police officer in, from Revere. When I, it brings you back for when I dealt with the incident in Brookline. It's just, and it causes stress. There was a report done by the Vera Institute that says how a lot of people are stressed and, and they, they get stressed from this. And, and you know I've had a heart attack. And I wonder why I had a heart attack. And, you, and, you, and what ends up happening is that they're un, more likely not to call police when something happens. So for me, like if I'm racially profiled, why would I trust you uh, and call the police when something else happens? So you wonder when you hear Commissioner Evans or Mayor Walsh tell our, the black community to step up, normally they get stepped, stepped on. They're not going to come out and, and they don't feel it. when the witness protection programs the funds are being cut. Why would people come come forward? They, they're feeling really bad. So, you know, I, I, I'm going to continue to do the work. Uh, Milton Dialogues, Milton Reflecting, um, where we're going to have conversations with race, difference and civil responsibility. I'm going to continue as I've done in Mission Hill following the Stewart tragedy. And I seem like I always bring that up when I come on this show. But it's something that is in me that, and, and again, it brings you back. It's a trauma trigger. Thank you both mm -hmm. very much, Ron Bell and Don Duncan from the Milton Dialogues Committee.